All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, we are right at the top of the hour, and I can see the participant number uh, growing. So thank you very much for joining us today for this part two series of our webinar. Uh, we, I'm going to go ahead and, and wait for another minute or two to allow some people to join in um, before we get started. So we will, we will start shortly. Okay, we will wait just a just a touch longer. <clears throat> okay, I think uh, we're good to go. Thank you for everybody for joining. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come to this webinar series that uh, that we've been broadcasting. Uh, hopefully you were able to uh, view and or attend our part one uh, of this series. Uh, part two is building upon uh, part one, obviously, in this multi-part series. And so we hope you're finding value in this, and we hope that this is educational and helpful to uh, some of the things that you are doing in your business and looking at uh, you know, possibly implementing virtual desktops in your environment or even considering, you know, some kind of an upgrade or change to what you're what you're currently doing. So that is our aim with this series is to is to be an educational resource to best practices and to uh, helping educate what uh, the important components are of this environment and what you can consider for for yourselves and for your objectives with your business. So in our webinar series called Mastering the Art of VDI Cloud Adoption, we're in part two. Uh, we are going to take a deep dive into day one challenges, um, really focusing on a couple of components of day one, which would be uh, migration, deployment, uh, and use case realization to uh, what the project is entailing. So today on this call we have uh the following as our agenda we'll go through an introduction of our our expert panelists that are joining us here today um we will go through use cases some integ integration tactics security and configuration decisions uh advanced considerations you will want to take um, and also data management and migration strategies <laughs> from there we will uh, have some closing remarks our panelists, and then end with a Q&A. Now, just a few housekeeping items. We are going to make sure that all participants are muted. Um, that way we don't have any um, background noise or anything that can disrupt uh, the webinar. Though, during the uh, webinar and during the conversation we're having today, please, if you have questions that pop up, don't wait until the end. Uh, we don't want you to forget them. And so put them in the lower part of your screen next to the chat box, there's a QA and a uh, button. So please enter any questions you have during the webinar into that Q&A box. And that's, we will get to those during that, that Q&A session at the end. So with that being said, let me move on and, and uh, have our, join, our panelists join us. Um, so we have with us uh, Narav, and he comes to us with uh, about 14 or so years of experience in his field and Sharon as well with with over a decade, I think 11 or so years um, in his field of expertise. <clears throat> um, both of these panelists uh, have have a lot of deep knowledge in the world of virtual desktops and in the world of what 
it is that we're going to be focusing on here today. So taking these questions, we'll, uh, we, these, are, these are the right people for the job, so to speak. So let's move on, guys. Uh, I, 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 Narav, why don't you uh, let's let's match voices to um, names. Rob, Narav, if you can start, and then Sharon, just kind of say hello. Hello, everyone. This is Nero here, and I will be one of the members who will be discussing the topics today. Hey, thanks, Nero. Uh, Sharon here. Uh, happy to be here, and looking forward uh, to the session. It's going to be a really informative and productive. Back to you, Zach. Okay, thank you. And, and Nirav, if you wouldn't uh, mind, you know, either speaking up a little bit or or moving closer to the microphone, it was a little bit quiet. I want to make sure everyone can hear you really well. But thank you guys for for joining us. This is going to be a very very educational uh, period uh, webinar for you guys to have to to join us with. So. Let's go ahead and start segment one. Uh, we will start with use cases and integration tactics. Now, when uh, businesses are looking at a virtual desktop uh, type of an environment, whether it's it's new greenfield deployment or something that they're doing with an upgrade, how can they ensure VDI best practices while discovering the, the use case for themselves and for their environment? And then Sharon, I, I can start with you on this. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Uh, this is a really important question. Uh, you know, it's just not enough to discover the use cases of a customer and implement it. Got to think it from a holistic perspective and ensure the best VDI practices are followed so that you get a cohesive uh, virtual desktop infrastructure solution. So to talk about some of the best practices, uh, you know, which I've come across in my experiences, one, understand the customer's industry whether it's the banking sector or healthcare or manufacturing and so on. And accordingly, you'll know what are the current patterns which according to each industry. That's one thing to understand. Secondly is the VDI use type or the user type. There are uh, different types of users. You have your kiosk users, you have your power users, you have your task workers and your knowledge workers. So understanding the business, understanding the users and accordingly, you know, you know, assigning the right uh, compute for the virtual desktop for those type of users for the assignments of pool is very important. So that's another factor to remember while uh, discovering the client use cases. Going a bit more further into it is, uh, it's just not enough to just implement the use cases. You got to think from a scalability standpoint. Hey, can I add more users later after the project is over one, once it moves to operations into production? Do I have the resources to do that? So scalability, that's something that you've got to keep in mind as well. Also, disaster recovery. Uh, just not enough to create a single site. You've got to, you've got to think about your RPOs, your RTOs, your know, recovery point objectives, your recovery time objectives, and uh, make sure that there is a secondary site ready in case the, uh, the primary site goes down and you need to fail over. And also, from a project standpoint, ensure that you do those disaster uh, recovery drills in the project phase itself. So, uh, the main thing for the customer is production needs to always happen and be always on. So disaster recovery is another best practice that needs to be ensured while you uh, perform the use case implementation. Other than that, right. um, like that. Uh, other than that, uh, one of the main things I've seen in my experience is uh, something we call image scroll, crawl or virtualization scroll. So you got to while you implement the project, you got to think, hey, is my admin is he able to manage it when it moves to the production phase? If I just create an image and thousands of virtual desktops, you think, hey, is my, you know, my VDI admin, is he able to patch it? Is he able to perform changes? So you got to think from a, what we call the floating and dedicated desktop assignments, which is easier to patch, which is not easier to patch, or try to bring a third party solution for patching. So the mindset is not just for implementation, also think about you know, how the operation teams, what they'll face, and accordingly architect the solution and implement it. So uh, that's one uh, important thing. Uh, other than that is uh, see whether you can implement your BYOD policies. Um, you no, know, there will be uh, many end users not just using the company assets. Maybe they'll be using tablets and laptops. So that's something to keep in mind whether you can implement that as well as your for your VDI solution. So uh, go to. Just to add on to that Sharon's point, right? You know, choosing the right form factors and while we consider the workloads and size and configuration also plays an important role here. And, you know, how do we simplify the use case, what we have understood from the uh, uh, customer and bring it to the 
VDI workload, right? That is uh, one of the right, uh, you know, understanding which we need to do it, right? Also the better end user experience and performance where we worked with what is the extension of heavy graphic applications or, you know, uh, supply chain distribution, which has come into uh, during the GPU uh, chip shortages, right? Continuous performance monitoring, uh, what are the right size resources? Do we need auto scaling, power on, power off? Such use cases uh, do play an important role. While we also do the storage optimizations uh, on to bring into the IOPS challenges while we uh, design the VDI. Yeah, over to you, Zach, on that. Yeah, yeah. What I what I love about the, your answers to this question is, and it, this image helps to show that the use case use case is made up of of a lot of factors right so as as organizations as, as customers are looking at, at at a virtual desktop environment um it's it's important to not just look for you know license shopping right or, or just look at licenses out there it's it's very important in, in our our uh, experience it's important to look at the entirety of this holistically to consider all of these different components uh, and and how the virtual desktop best practices cover the use case uh, because that's really where the the most value the most efficiency gains the most um you know of, of most uh, use of of the of the uh <clears throat> the virtual desktops are are going to be realized here. So great answers uh, to, to to that question um, and and focusing on keeping you know a, a full view on that on that on that use case in mind. Um, let's jump to the next uh, the next segment here. Uh, security and configuration decisions. Now this is obviously another component of the business that virtual desktops, uh, really have a, a, a strong effect on. And so what factors should be considered when designing between on-premise and, and cloud configurations um, in terms of security and, security and configuration? And Sharon, I'll let you start on this one again. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Another great question. So this is really pivotal. Uh, as you see, uh, you know, corporates moving into the VDI platform. Sometimes you got to make a decision from the uh, IT side, whether it's just do I need a multi-site on-prem site, uh, on-prem on sites, or do I need to do a hybrid between on-prem and cloud, or do I need to you know, fully move to the cloud? So uh, some of the consideration factors, one would be uh, uh, you know, the scalability again. Uh, for on-prem, um, you know, you've got to always you know, make sure that the hardware is ready when you want to scale and add more users, and giving a scenario when code happened, right? Uh, there were companies which really suffered because most of the users or end users were remote workers or they're working from home. And there was this huge upspring for, you know, moving their, you know, the platform to the cloud or having at least their DR on the cloud. Because when you go to the cloud, it's easy to add resources on the fly. It's uh, easy to, you know, make DR sites redundancy. So that's one consideration point uh, uh, when deciding between on-prem and cloud, right? Other one is would be the uh, governance, right? So it's all good when you're having your on-prem sites, but if there's uh, there's a reason that you need to go to cloud, how do you ensure that you have the data compliance or the data security in place? So that's a consideration factor, whether that compliance factor, when you do the audits, that you kind of clear it as well. So that's another point to look at. Um, over to you, Nira, if you want to add anything else. Yeah, thank you, Shadam. So, uh... Yeah, that's a difficult uh, question when to choose on-premise or cloud, right? And, and or to choose hybrid nowadays, all the VDI solutions are coming, uh, a universal console and you can deploy them either in cloud or on-prem or keep both. Uh, but the main thing would be how the product is or the application needs to be closer to the VDI, which is where the focus is required so that there is no application latency. So there is no definite answer, okay, what do we want to choose between cloud or on-premise or hybrid? But yeah, it is where how the product or the application or the company is going, definitely that will help to uh, finalize the right solution, right cloud solution or the right 
on-premise solution for that. Over to you, Zach. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And whether it's on-premise or or in the cloud, which which way is best to go, right? Very much depends on on that company and what their objectives and what it is that's important to uh, what they're trying to achieve. So great, great points, great answer, and, and a lot of things to consider when making that decision. Um, so moving on to some advanced considerations and building on to this, you know, what many, many uh, organizations are going to face different challenges when they are integrating GPUs into their virtualized environment. So what might those be um, that they're going to face? Sharon, yeah. I'll let you. Yeah, thanks, Ed. So again, a uh, really important thing, especially in COVID, it reminds me of that time, you know, a lot of customers, you know, they use this graphical processing unit. And uh, if most people are aware, there was a supply chain issue that time uh, because of COVID, because the uh, there are issues in the supply chain, not getting the graphic chips. So again, mm -hmm. this is something important. You see more and more customers, you know, you know, especially with the power users or the heavy users, when they use graphic intensive applications and they want to use the cloud, so use the GPU options there. So the first challenge phase is the cost, right? You keep on uh, you know, increasing the, uh, the compute for the GPU, it's going to get an increased cost. So, uh, by the end of the month, you should not be seeing your cost of your virtual environment. So that's something to keep in mind while you're implementing so that you get the right GPU or compute for your virtual desktops. That's one. Uh, other one is, uh, this reminds me of another project that I did. We had this customer and they kind of chose this particular cloud region to reduce the uh, users next to the cloud region. So they wanted to reduce latency. And they were again a graphic intensive uh, user, uh, user case and uh, the thing is they chose the region, but they didn't check whether that exact GPU compute was there in that region. So that's something else to keep in mind. It's not just to you know, choose the cloud region, which is next to the users, also ensure that you have the right resources, especially from a GPU standpoint, so that you can kind of utilize that GPU for your users. And also another important point would be to optimize the GPU for the VDI environment. Uh, and there are challenges around that. So that's also something uh, to keep in mind. Um, Nira, we want to add a few points as well. Sure, I would like to take this on uh, for the graphical piece. So in graphical piece, it's easy to you know give a okay a machine for a dedicated uh, user, right? A persistent user where uh, the graphic is designed and he is using it for it. But uh, the right challenge is to give it to the non-persistent VM where the application supports it and to give the right experience using that and considering the cost of the GPUs and the combination with the non-persistent, it helps not only the cost, but to optimize the VDI solutions, uh, let it be the cloud or be the on-prem, right? And uh, we've worked with a customer where uh, we have designed uh, the application in a way where the licensing to the application stability has been done through the profiling part. And it, it's an it's a environment which can be a costly, but based on the design, we can do the right uh, compute sizes and be in control of the environment. Over to you, Zach, on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it, it's important what you just said. The, the... It's important to find the user's needs and then understanding how the, the VDI GPUs, how they can support them appropriately, right? Um, we, we see too often uh, environments that, that we uh, are introduced to where, you know, the, 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 the GPUs and the users are, are not aligned and there could be a lot of waste uh, when we when we go in and look at that on and 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 consult with how an organization can enhance what they're doing, so so very very important to to consider all of that absolutely. Um, so in this next question, you know, looking at data management and migration strategies, you know, this is the, all of these components are very important. Um, you know, when when looking at at VDI. There, there are all these components that that are important to consider 
um, even into this, this strategy of how you migrate everything, right? So what are the common challenges that you guys see organizations face during the migration? You know, whether they're going to VDI or DAS, uh, what, what are some of those common common issues that, that, that they have? I'll take that, down, Zach. So again, this is my wheelhouse being working in projects. So sometimes it's very easy to kind of onboard the environment to implement the use cases, but uh, you kind of get a face heat when you're in migration because you're dealing with the end users. So a good you know, media practice and good project management practices, one would be uh, to share standard operating procedures to the end users, uh, you know, how to access a new media platform, make it a really uh, a descriptive and a simple step-by-step -step, uh, uh, instruction guide with screenshots so, uh, so they can be educated on how to use the media platform. Otherwise, you'll have a customer with around 10,000 users, and each time you need to go to each user and tell them, hey, this is the way you need to log in. So that's one good practice that can be followed. Uh, secondly is on the UAT, right? Or the user acceptance test, uh, testing. So before you hit migration and start it off, start the waves, you got to have the uh, user acceptance testing done by both the IT side, the IT UAT, as well as the user UAT. So ensure that uh, all the seating issues found during the UAT is resolved and then only you know, initiate the user migration and ensure to also get the sign up for both IT and user, user UAT from your customer. Uh, thirdly, uh, it's also about the migration. You can't just migrate you know, all the users at one time. You, that's like uh, playing with fire. So you gotta you know, divide it by waves, make a clear cut migration plan. You know, first move your first wave of you know hundred users. Keep uh, observation time. Is everything stable? Then only move to your next batch. So having this wave to wave uh, migration batches to kind of ensure that you know production is not impacted and also the end user experience is good. Uh, Nira, want to add anything else on this? Yeah. So thank you so much, Shyam. On that, yeah, the challenges in migrations uh, are very important. Uh, like you know. Uh, when we migrate the users from one solution to other or from the on-premise to the uh, to the cloud, right? The, the file shells do play the important role. We don't want to keep the profiles uh, lingering in the uh, local machine, right? So uh, considering the right tools for the migration uh, and bring those data back to the solution so that there is a consistent experience for the end user, which plays an important role during the user migration. In that, we need to understand what kind of profile the user is. Is, is the user which we are migrating, are all of them the consistent profile? So there is a way which we can push a mandatory profile or mandatory settings, which we can give to all the users. Whenever they log in, they will get all those settings in place so that don't, they don't have difficulties when they log into the EUC to find a B or C desktop or a shortcut, or it may be any other application-based configuration which we can push using the different profiling solution. So uh, that that's the how the migration or pre-work for the migration goes, uh, in which we do the UAT and then bring on the users. Uh, that's one of the challenge uh, in the migration. The other migration challenge we have faced is definitely uh, Sharon spoke about the SOPs, the user, uh, to educate the users on how to uh, use the VDI. Uh, sometimes that becomes a challenge, but uh, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, thank you, Zach, on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just to to add a, a final remark to uh, the, to these four questions and to, to all of the good input that you guys have have said here, it is important when uh, somebody is is looking at a VDI environment to work with experts like yourselves, right? To to work with a company and people who are going to go through uh, the steps necessary to make sure that, that the entire environment, the full use case is well understood and and well defined. So that when when you know customers and yourselves are making those decisions on which 
direction to go, right? Which which licenses to go with, which cloud to move to or on-prem management or which services company and system integrations like Anunta are, are there to support you through and, and, and through all of those day two challenges once deployment's done. That those things are all important to consider is who is who is coaching you and who is um, helping you into that solution and making sure that that all the T's are crossed and the I's dotted so that once the the deployment and migration happens that the environment is optimized as much as possible right out of the gates. So a final comment there for me I, that I think is is very important. Um, any any other final comments, Sharon or uh, Narav, before we jump into our Q and A? Yeah, I'd like to add one point just to add to what you said, Zach. It, it's all good use cases, all the jargon that we use, but the most important thing is the end use experience because that's what we're doing, right? So everything's kind of tailored to that. Are you getting the end user experience being better or same as the previous environment? It should be better. So. That's the end goal of all this, you know, projects, operations, your end users need to be satisfied and they need to be protected. That's what I would like to add to that. Yeah, great idea, great, great comment. All right, I think we've got a couple of questions here that we'll jump into um, that I saw come up. Um, first question is, uh, this one came in um, earlier. I'm not, I'm not sure which part we were discussing there. But is it possible to configure AWS security monitoring to monitor compliance? Um, for example, NASTS SP800-53 <laughs> of the virtual desktop. So it, it's a pretty specific question. Um, but uh, you know, if you guys want to answer that, you know, as is succinctly as take that, Zach. So I believe uh, the different VDA solution on AWS. Yes, I believe they can be monitored using the AWS security monitoring. And, and you know, there would be different parameters uh, of the different solution, uh, maybe not native to AWS. And those can be a challenge in monitoring using AWS security, but they might be a different tools or different uh, applications of uh, DAS solutions, uh, which can help doing this. but. Yeah, we will need to take a deeper look uh, into this uh, and we can come back on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that that, that question can get pretty deep into uh, finding a really specific answer for. So, um, Chris, that was your that was your question. We we actually would love to uh, connect with you after this and and set up a time where we can we can go deeper into getting you exactly um, what it is that you're looking for in that answer um, with with uh, the team here. So happy to do that. Please uh, reach out and we can we can do that later. Um, another another question was more around EU, EU, the EUC transformation um, and what are what what are challenges faced um, during EUC transformation for a financial uh, customer, financial banking customer? Yeah, I'll, uh, specifically with the banking and financial sector, or what you call the BFSI type of companies, uh, some of the things that you really need to consider while you're performing the EUC transformation, one is obviously the data security, right? Uh, when it comes to a banking environment, the data, you to ensure that it's secure, that it's not being accessible anywhere. That that would be one point. Secondly, would be would be the legacy applications. If you're using a physical environment and you're moving to a VDI, be it you know on premises or on cloud, will those legacy applications work? And what technology of the VDI you need to use? So it kind of uh, means a lot of UAT. Ensure that everything's working before you, you know, move to the VDI environment. Thirdly, uh, usage of BYOD devices. Uh, the policies around that so to ensure that you know when it comes to banking there'll be users all around the world it, it won't be possible to kind of send your assets all over so a byod approach approach would be uh preferred but also needs to be secure so that's something that needs to be integrated and finally again uh come back to the point of image from you know you need to ensure that the um, it admin or the, the cloud admin right is in control of the patching you know and the changes that he needs to make in the video environment so it's uh you know better to kind of specify it on the image level. Make sure that you you know really think and design when you decide whether it's a persistent desktop 
or a non-process in that top. Uh, that would be some of the considerations that we use that. Yeah, sounds great. Um, I, we don't have any other questions that have come in, just those two. So uh, if, if anyone is wanting to have any kind of consultation or exploration of what you're currently working on or working with, and you're considering a virtual environment, virtual desktop environment, or even just uh, upgrading what you currently have uh, to, you know, something something more advanced or newer, uh, please engage us. We're that's what we do. We are more than happy to um, go into a discovery call and and learn about your environment and and give you what we believe would be the the best uh, best solution to the use case that you have. Um, so with that being said, uh, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Nirav, for attending today and giving us your insights into the fields that you guys uh, are, are experts in. Uh, we appreciate all of you joining today. Um, and uh, please reach out if you have any questions or any needs that we can assist with. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. All. <laughs>